Okay, so I have around 36 books, which is quite a lot. Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shreya and in today's video, I'll be picking some books from the TBR jar. So this is how it works. I have around 16 prompts in this jar. And I'm gonna pick around seven or eight. Let's see, depending on how much I need to read. I'll also make sure to make a post on my bookstagram if you want to join along with these prompts for the month. So, you know, it'll be kind of a fun thing to do together. Let me just get hydrated. Another reason why I wanted to do this is because although I'm like three books ahead on my Goodreads challenge this year, which is just 24 books for the year i did or sorry i did underestimate my reading abilities because i thought this was going to be a busy year i'm just ahead by three books not by a lot obviously but i kind of want to do at least eight or seven books this month and let's see how it goes shall we i am so excited i've always wanted to do these Sadly, I don't have like rolling TBR card. Booktubers have. Probably I'll get one soon if this method works for me. So I have a very first prompt for this month. I'm so excited. Okay. Book with one person on the cover. Let's just see our options first. I'm really sorry that the books are a bit, you know, not in order, but now I do realize why they use rolling cart instead of piling up the books like this. It's so much easier to just pull out the book from the options. And this is going to be really hard, but we're just gonna roll with it for this time. Okay, so we have three options for the first prompt. So I think I'm just gonna pick the book by the process of elimination. First one is Felix Ever After after look at how gorgeous the edges are but i don't know if i should go for this because i do remember writing a prompt for sprayed edges because i just wanted to read this maybe i will be saving this for later i'm guessing this is a ya and then we have ali hazelwood's bride which is her first oops romanticy if i'm not wrong like yeah and i've been wanting to read this from a really long time and this was on my birthday book wish list so i got this as my birthday gift and i guess i'll be reading this let's just see the other one too so this book i don't know if it counts as one person on the cover but it does right it's a bit sad i would say i'm kind of swaying towards this one Although this kind of is a tad bit sad. Oh, this is kind of like vampire and werewolf romance. Misery Lark, the only daughter of the most powerful vampire councilman of the Southwest, is an outcast again. Her days of living in anonymity among the humans are over. She has been called upon to hold an historic peacekeeping alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the Wes, which I'm guessing is the werewolves and sees the little choice but to surrender herself in exchange again. Oh, is this kind of like marriage of convenience? Because I've seen a lot of books going viral on Bookstagram that has kind of like these alpha packs and promises. You know what I'm saying if you are into this community. So Bright is our first pick. I'm just gonna set this aside and show you all everything later. Let's move on and go for the second prompt. I'm gonna show it to you all first. Oh, I can read it back with a book. Oops, book gifted by someone. Okay, there's a lot of books that I've gotten as birthday gifts this year. For instance, the entire Akata series was a gift. Alice Osman series was a gift. Elsie Silver, like the um what's that called the chestnut spring series was a gift i don't know which one to go for if i'm being honest so the person who gifted me the chestnut spring series she didn't manage to find the book in the store or something because we don't have flawless from the chestnut spring series here and i wanted to read the series in order 
Um, but I'm gonna go for the second book in the series, which I'm guessing is Heartless. Ooh, this is kind of like a nanny and single dad romance. This is like new territory for me because I haven't read books like that, you know, like single dad romances. I've heard that a lot of people are into it, but I am just not sure if I'm into it, you know, but I guess I can find out. Elsie Silver, I've heard like such good things about her, but I've never managed to read any book from her before so i'm excited to read a book from her this month let's just read the blurb because i want to know what i'm getting into with this book working as a nanny for the world's grumpiest single dad should have been simple except i can't keep my eyes off him and he can't keep his hands off me okay this is kind of like grumpy sunshine if i'm not wrong i don't know i'm not sure yet let's read more kate eaton is 13 years older than me and barely looks my way until i get him into the hot tub for a game of truth or dare then all bets are off and so are our clothes i don't know if this this is like pg stuff y'all i don't want to read it in front of a camera Okay, I'm reading this. The last part says, My contract may say this arrangement is only for two months, but my heart says this is forever. Ooh. And it is... Oh my god, this book is... Ah, 452 pages. I don't know how I feel about romance books being more than 300 pages. It's just a lot of dragged drama. But I'm kind of done with romance and like just the basic books. Like, I am not into it at the moment. It's not like my jam. And thank you everyone who gave me a gift on my birthday. But I'm gonna pick this one for April. Two done, around five more to go. I don't know why I'm shaking the jar so much. Like I have like a hundred chips in this. I hope it's a good one. Okay, I'm excited. I have a really good feeling about this from a book that ends in an odd number of pages. Okay, that's a bit underwhelming after I had such a good feeling about this prompt. Maybe because I'll have a lot of options. I guess this is going to be the most open-ended prompt, meaning that I'll have a lot of options. So I'm planning to see the books that I'm actually interested to read this month and then see the number of pages so that I can narrow it down. I definitely want to read Done and Dusted. So this is one book that I wanted to read and I've heard such good things about. I'm hoping it ends. Oh no, it doesn't. It's even number of pages. It's 340 to be precise. I don't want to pick anything from the Akuta series because I'll have to read the entire series and it's going to be a lot. I want to read this together and I was initially planning to read this in May. Maybe do like a reading vlog of the entire series. Let me know if you all would like to or something like that because I actually binge all of those videos like Harry Potter reading vlogs and stuff like that. Oh, maybe we could do that. Let me just know if you all are up for that vibe. So these were the books at the back and let's just see if this ends an odd number of pages so when i'm checking for the number of pages i'm not considering the acknowledgement page just the end or the end of the epilogue so this is 318 so again even number of pages so i'm just gonna do this off camera because i don't want the battery to run down and yeah i'll be back so i have three books here that ends exactly in odd number of pages the first one is the shatter me by tahere murphy i'm sorry if that's completely wrong but i have heard so many people loving this series i'm pretty sure it's a very lengthy series and this is the only book that I own from the series and I've been wanting to read this from a really really long time but I have been just putting it aside. I don't know what I've been waiting for. I don't know why I've been doing that but I feel like I can read it this month. It's just 329 pages and it's going to be a quick read I feel because the list is literally getting longer by the minute. The other two options here I have are Fixer Up by Tessa Bailey. Now, I've read from Tessa Bailey before. I've read The Killer Vacation. Is it from her? Um, I'm just gonna check Goodreads for a minute. Killer Vacation. Yeah, that was by Tessa Bailey and I gave it three stars. Wasn't the biggest fan of the writing in that, nor the plot. I don't know if I should pick this up when i have like such a long tbr list for the month i feel like there is 
a pretty fat chance that I might not end up reading this book or this book is just gonna put me in a bad slump. So I'm just gonna keep it back respectfully. And the third option is A Code of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I've never read from her before. I'm pretty sure like I've reserved it for like vlogs and stuff like that because I genuinely want to record my reaction reading the entire series because I feel like I couldn't do that when I read Harry Potter like I was pretty young and I just feel like I wish I had those reactions with me so I don't know if I should you know get into this right now. Akutar is around 419 and this is just 329 so obviously I'm gonna go for this right now because it just makes sense and when I say I want to record my reaction reading books it's just because I've had like books that I wish I could read for the very first time and you know that feeling when you read a really good book you tend to forget it after a while I'm sorry I totally forgot I haven't read the blurb for Shatter Me the third book that I've picked for the month I mean I know the, what it's going to be and I just didn't go to read the blurb but don't worry, I got you covered. I'm gonna read it right now. And it goes, I have a gift. I'm more than a human. My touch is power. I will fight back. A fragile teenage girl is held captive, locked in a cell by the re-establishment, a harsh dictatorship in charge of crumbling world. But Juliet is a no ordinary teenager. One touch from her can kill. The re-establishment wants to use her as a weapon, but Juliet has other plans. After a lifetime without freedom, she's finally discovered strength to fight back and find a future with the one person she thought she'd lost forever. So romanticy, the one genre I can read like forever in my life. So I'm excited for this. I'm sorry if I give like weird reactions to books. That's just me. Like books make me happy. On to the fourth. Oops. This just randomly fell out. I guess I'm going with this. That's weird. A book from an author you've never read before. Hmm. That's interesting because there are a lot of authors. You know what? I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I, I mean, it's not cheating basically. Since I already told y'all I wanted to read Done and Dusted. I've never read from Lila Sage before. So I'm just gonna pick this without considering other options right now. I've been like seriously wanting to read this and look at how passionate the cover is. This is kind of giving like vintage comic graphics, you know. She's off limits, but he's never been good at following the rules. Discover the sizzling brother's best friend, small town romance that went viral on TikTok, now in a special edition with an exclusive sneak. For the first time in her life, Clementine Emmy Ryder has no idea what she's doing. She's accomplished everything on her to-do list. She left her small town home of Meadowlark, Wyoming went to college and made a career for herself by doing her favorite thing, riding horses. But after an accident, it makes it impossible for her to get back into the saddle. She has no choice but to return to the hometown she always wanted to escape. Luke Brooks is Meadowlark's most notorious bad boy, bar owner and bachelor. I don't know why authors always make the man in a small town romance a bar owner. Like, I don't know if it's a pattern. Let me know if y'all have observed this too. He's also the unofficial fifth member of Ryder family. So I'm guessing this is a series. As Emmy's older brother's best friend, Luke spent most of his childhood antagonizing her. It's been years since he's seen her, but when she walks into his bar and back into his life, he can't take his eyes off her. Against his better judgment, he wants to do a whole lot more than just look at her. As things between Emmy and Brooks heat up, it gets more difficult for him to keep his hands off her. Can he get? Okay, so this is like brother's best friend and small town romance. Maybe they were childhood friends, I'm not sure. I'm excited to read this. I love watching small town romance movies. I guess this book will end up be the first book. I don't know. Without wasting more time, let's just pick another one. I don't remember half of the prompts I've written. Book with flowers on the cover. How spring. This prompt is so perfect given the spring TBR. That's the reason I added it but I didn't expect, you know, me to pick this up. I could do any of the Chestnut Spring series even though I know like I wanted to read it in order. These are standalones by the way if I haven't mentioned it. 
so i could do any of these i could do this too the sun and her flowers by ruby core this kind of is perfect a very light read and since i'm traveling quite a few times this month maybe this will be like the perfect airport read for me look at how gorgeous this cover is and also very in theme with the spring so let's just go with that i really like how the entire list has turned out until now so i'm hoping for something along the same lines i guess i'm gonna put uh pick oh this two and this wow which one do i go for this one this looks long a book that's set in a place you've always wanted to go these are the two options i'm going to choose from one is based in hamptons and one is in rome both the places that i would love to travel to someday i've been to rome but not for a long time i would say like it was for a day so i would love to actually see what this book has in store do remember picking this book as my 24th read for 2023 in december but i just couldn't finish it or i switched i switched it for something else in the end i'm not quite sure and this book i got from a book fair if i'm not wrong and i thought it was a really nice one she's moved on he's moved back it's kind of like a second uh second chance romance and it's like a will they won't they get back together kind of a trope and will they won't they get back together kind of a situation and it's just a cozy read you know like will a perfect escape bring them back together so definitely a second chance romance and whereas this one is rome is where the heart is amelia rose is burned out from years of maintaining her public image as a pop princess ray rose inspired by her favorite audrey hepburn film roman holiday she drives off in the middle of the night for a break in rome rome kentucky that is so this is basically not in rome okay running the pie shop is his grandmother's oh okay so i guess this is not exactly in rome like i assumed this was like in italy i just don't know why i picked this now i just look foolish then i'm gonna go with this one for sure because it just has the perfect vacation vibe so i'm gonna go with this y'all are not gonna believe me if i show you all the pile right now because it's looking so aesthetic like everything is so color coordinated and obviously there's no way i've rigged this y'all know i'm guessing this bride in red font is throwing it off a little bit but you can see how good the entire stack is looking just two more this around one two three four five six we've, oh we've done six already so i guess i'm gonna do one more and that will be it for this month because i, I do have to travel this month so this is the last prompt that i've picked for today for this entire month i mean what a way to end a book that is out of my comfort zone so i'd say these two books are definitely out of my comfort zone compared to the rest from the pile this one is a thriller or like sort of like a murder mystery the interpreter by brooke robinson i feel like i got this last year during halloween to read like a lot of murder mysteries and you know horror books revel is a quote interpreter and knows the power of words she spends her days translating for other people murderers fraudsters and their victims she speaks their words only she knows exactly what they're saying when revel spots an injustice is about to take place and a guilty man about to be labeled innocent she has the power to twist an alibi to get the verdict she wants the verdict she believes is correct she's willing to risk it all but someone knows what she's done and they want justice so i feel like the last two sentences is basically why i bought this book but someone knows what she's done and they want justice so this is going to be sort of like a thriller which i feel like i read a lot so maybe i'm gonna skip this one and just go for this this is totally out of my comfort zone even though i love the idea of classics you won't find me reading a lot of classics but i do want to get into that so maybe this will be a start this is the great gatsby let me just see what the book is 
about because the blurb does not offer any explanation of any sorts. It is an exquisitely crafted tale of America in the 1920s. The Great Gatsby is one of the greatest classics of 20th century. I'm guessing this kind of covers the jazz age in New York in a really beautiful way. I'm excited to read this. So this is how my April TBR looks. I have seven books here and I feel like I can definitely finish this. Hopefully I do and I have one classic, around four romances if I'm not wrong, two fantasies, no thrillers. Maybe I should have picked the other one, but it's fine. If this has worked for me, I'm gonna review this in the next TBR or like April wrap up or something like that. I'll catch you next month. I hope you subscribe to my channel and stick around for all of the fun content and creative ideas that I'm planning to put up on this channel. And I'll see you next time.